Hi, I'm Robert. Welcome to Rhino Dillo Designs. Today, we're going to be making a sink. Now, this is a very special sink used for pottery. Using this sink here and a two bucket system along with a pump and a few other things to stand independent of any sort of plumbing municipal system or anything like that. So it's going to be a self-contained sink out in our shop, which we don't have plumbing run into. So come along with us. We're going to turn this into something useful. First, I wanna go over a few things that this project's gonna require. Of course, it's gonna require a sink. A utility sink like this can be picked up from any big box store, somewhere around 75 to 150 bucks, depending on where you're at and what's available in your area. The framing for this sink is gonna be built out of some simple two by four framing. It's gonna be eventually on casters, that way it can be portable and roll around our studio as we need it. The other thing you're gonna need is a transfer pump. It's about a hundred bucks from Home Depot. Just get the cheapest transfer pump that you can find at your big box store, that'll work. You're also gonna need two buckets, at least five gallons. You're gonna need a household string filter along with the actual filter mechanism. Some caulk. You'll need a hole saw or some sort of way to cut a hole in the lid of a bucket. You'll need a couple of lengths of tubing. You're going to need some connections for that tubing. Get something that's specific for your pump that you find. Find here, I've got a half inch male connection into an adapter garden hose connection. And on the other end, I've got another half inch connector. That connector is actually going to go into this water line. Finally, I've got some fittings that tubing can thread through pretty tightly to make an air seal. The other thing that you can do is find some grommets which I actually also have that we may use for this project. Overall the total cost for everything here was somewhere around $250 to $300. The design for this is specifically inspired by the Diamond Core Sink. Sink with a C. You can look it up. I'll have a link to it in the description. It is a very good system but it is not really affordable for an entry-level potter. The reason being it's a $2,000 plus dollar system. I don't have that kind of money to drop on a pottery sink that is so very specialized, can't really use it for anything else. I'm gonna jerry-rig mine and make sure that I have a working system that fits our needs. That way we can get established in our pottery practice here. So what we'll do is go through this, take you along building this thing and also figuring it out because I don't necessarily have everything figured out about this system. And I have a feeling that it, this is gonna require a couple more trips to Home Depot maybe. That being said, let's get this sink emptied and cleaned up and we'll get started on our project. That thing has been sitting for, I don't know how many years before we moved in. It was here when we bought the house. Now it's clean. All right, the next thing we gotta do is build a frame for this. So if you're liking this so far, please give us a like. It really helps. And let's get on with the build. That's gonna be my top frame. To give you a rough idea of how this is gonna to go together real quick, this smaller square here is going to be where the sink actually drops in. And then the remainder is gonna be the structure for countertop. All right, there it is. Got the countertop on the bottom, base on the top. Okay, legs are a pretty simple matter. I know that I want the sink to sit 37 inches tall. I'm gonna cut my legs to 36 and three quarter or 36 and a half, depending on if I'm using half inch or if I have half inch or quarter inch plywood here. And that'll bring me up to the full 37 inches. I finished cutting up all the legs. Eight two by fours cut to 36 and a half inches. There's gonna be two two by fours per leg making kind of an L shape on each corner and that's how it's gonna work. All right, it's the next day and we've got the legs to put together today. Okay, we're back. That's what we've got. It doesn't look the best, but 
it, it gets the job done and that's the important thing. These two, you know, the two parts of the leg are bonded together uh, up here and down there where they tie into the upper and lower shelves. Gonna cut this down to the right size and, and get this, um, you know, the opening cut out and we'll go from there. So here we go. We got a sinkhole cut out, got our countertop done. We need to do our lower shelf and then screw it all together and then uh, we'll be done. Or oh, with the structure at least. Then we got to set up the sink. All right, so we've got our table. Look at that. So this just drops right in. I'm not gonna bother screwing this down since it's a, like a perfect fit there. I will need to screw this top down. I think I'm just gonna screw in from the top. get one coat of polyurethane on this thing before tonight's over and then I'll hit it again in the morning then it should be done all right it's the next day so we're gonna get to sanding this first coat so this green is raised so we need to sand this down before we get the second coat of polyurethane on it. That's the last coat of polyurethane. We just gotta let this dry and then we can start assembling the sink. So this is getting pretty long. I think I'm gonna break this up into two videos. Stay tuned for part two of this where we actually assemble the sink and I'll go over all the uh, bucket system and plumbing and everything there uh, where you can, you can get the sink together. And uh, we'll be actually doing that in our new studio which is now insulated and ready to work in. So I'm excited about that get out of this really compact, uh, very crowded as you can see, garage where there's very little workspace and I don't have any work surfaces. Until next time, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you next time. Look at that thing. It's one of those hammerhead worms. Apparently they're toxic.